Aloha. Happy Sabbath, my uh, fellow church. It's uh, good to be here. It's just like what the elder was saying. Um, every time we go to uh, church, we're supposed to be happy people. Amen? Amen. We're supposed to be walking here with the, the brightest smile ever that you can give because you're going to your God and your Creator. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're glad to be here with the children. The pastor was asking for me to come, and then I look at my children, and they will be looking at it. Dad, what is this? <laughs> but I decided to bring them all so that we can sing and praise the Lord to them. Amen. We'll sing a couple songs for you since uh, we're going to have a good time. Amen? Amen. Amen. We'll start with number seven.
return to the seat. I just wanted to get up. I told Pastor Naha, I just wanted to do a quick introduction. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Pastor Naha, he is coming from the island of Kauai. There are, what, two churches there, right? Yeah, he's a pastor of both churches there, which keeps him busy, just like Pastor Eric is busy. But um, before he gets, you know, it's funny, because when I first met him, I asked him, he, he said he had only been in Kauai for a certain amount of time. He hadn't been there too long. So I asked him where he came from, and I was expecting him to say New Zealand, or one of the other neighboring islands. Instead, you told me he came from Kentucky? Is that right? <laughs> and I don't know how that worked out, but uh, uh, he, I guess he had a good time there, and he enjoyed it there. But I never would have imagined he would say, well, I came from Kentucky. <laughs> that would have been probably my last guess. But we're really glad to be here with us this morning. And I just want us to pray while Pastor Naha speaks. Because you know, this is a serious thing when people get up and speak for the Lord. Yeah. So, I want us all to claim the promise of Jeremiah 1, verse 9, where God says, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And we ask that God will do that with you this morning. Pastor Nala. Happy Sabbath, Church. Yes. Happy Sabbath. Thank you all for the wonderful introduction. Uh, as was mentioned, my name is uh, Douglas Na, and I... Just um, happy to be here. Aloha. I, Aloha. Uh, I, I know your pastor, Pastor Eric, and uh, we have good talks every now and then. And so I just wanted to modify a little bit about what uh, our Lenny just mentioned in that uh, I came from Kentucky. My wife and I, who couldn't be here, she hasn't been feeling well for the past few days. and. Um, I work, my wife and I work, we pastored in Kentucky uh, for a number of years and uh, before that uh, we were in Michigan at Andrews University and before that um, I worked up and down the east coast of the mainland, New York, Georgia, and Virginia and so my, our last district uh, before we came here to uh, Kentucky, before we got the call, was Kentucky and so though I worked in Kentucky, I'm actually not from Kentucky y'all. <laughs> so, uh, I'm originally, I'm originally from uh, New Zealand. I was born and raised in New Zealand, both my wife and I, born and raised in New Zealand, but we are of, we are of uh, Tongan descent, Polynesian descent. And so, though I was born in New Zealand, I actually grew up in Tonga. And I uh, was there for a number of years, and then in my teenage life, my young adult life, I came back to uh, New Zealand and uh, carried on my, uh, my tertiary education there. But praise God, uh, I wasn't born an Adventist. I was actually born and raised a Methodist. And so, but God in His mercy and His grace, uh, has, in His love and His grace, brought me to be part of this great remnant movement. Uh, and so I love, as I stand before you today, I see a, a little slice of heaven. That's what I love about God's remnant movement. Every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Amen. Amen. And uh, I love it, I love it as I stand before you today, I see so many different backgrounds. We all come from different experiences, we all come from different uh, uh, ethnicities, but we have one thing in common, Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. Uh, just out of curiosity, how many of you uh, did not did not grow up Adventist? In other words, you were converted into Adventism. Well, I'll probably say that's a, that's a large chunk of you, that, that's a testament in and of itself. That, uh, that God is preparing a people for His soon return. Amen? Amen. So I'm thankful for Pastor uh, Eric for allowing me to uh, be here today. Uh, it was only possible. Uh, I do pastor two churches on the island of Kauai, but then I also have another half a church here on Oahu, uh, where I come you know, once a month or sometimes once a quarter, uh, a little Tongan group that meets over at Central Church. And so I come here and just kind of oversee them every now and then. And it just so happened that this Sabbath, and they have their worship later on in the afternoon, 3, 4 o'clock. And so it just so happened that this Sabbath is the Sabbath that I'm designated to be over there at the Tommy groups. So we might as well, so to speak, kill two birds with one stone and, uh, and uh, be here with my wife, Pahu family. And then later on, uh, I'm going to excuse myself, I will be moving over to the uh, Central Church to be with my my Tommy family and brothers and sisters here. Thank you so much to the Emilio family. Let's give them a hearty amen for their wonderful special music. Uh, they came at my request, and I thank you. I thank you for that. And of course, good friend Diamond being here. Uh, good seeing him every now and then. Before we begin, uh, why don't we have a word of prayer and ask God's blessing. 
Father, speak to us this morning. Give us Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have entitled today's sermon, if you notice in your bulletin, The Jesus Nobody Wants. The Jesus Nobody Wants. Usually in my preaching itinerary, when I preach at a church for the very first time, I'm usually preaching a, church, a sermon that's uplifting and encouraging. And yes, this sermon is encouraging. But for the first time in a while, my sermon today is more of a warning. A message with a concern. And the concern is, is that many in our church, and even in Christendom, Seek for a Jesus they do not want. If you notice White Baho Church, in a general sense, even after 2,000 years, Jesus is still popular. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Even after 2,000 years, since Jesus was here and he died on the cross, Jesus today is still popular. I mean, even amongst our Jewish brothers and sisters, even though they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, they still believe that Jesus was a good guy. So even after 2,000 years, Jesus, in a sense, is still popular. Then when we come to our Muslim brothers and sisters, even though they don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, they still believe that Jesus is a good prophet. We won't think that he's the Son of God, our Muslim brothers and sisters will say and teach, but, but he's a good prophet. Muhammad was better, but Jesus is a good prophet. So even after 2,000 years, Jesus is so popular. And then, and then when we come to our, to our mystic religion, brothers and sisters, even though they don't believe that Jesus is God, they, 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 they still have this respect that Jesus was a good guy who would go about doing good things. So amongst our Jewish brothers and sisters, Though they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, they still believe that Jesus is a good guy. Our Muslim brothers and sisters, they still believe that Jesus is popular, but popular only as a prophet, but not so much the Son of God. Then with our mystic New Age brothers and sisters, Jesus was this good loving guy who would walk around doing good for people, feeding the poor, clothing the homeless, all of these wonderful things. And then if you notice why Pahul Church, when it comes to December the 25th, when it comes to Christmas season, Jesus is especially popular. Have you noticed that? This cute little boy in a manger that we just wanna, we just wanna pinch his cheeks and we just, we just wanna cuddle him and we just wanna hug him and, and, and we, just wanna, we just wanna sing lullaby and, 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 and just put him to rest. And so, and so I wanna reiterate my, 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 my proposition here in that even after 2,000 years, Jesus is still popular. Amen. And then, we have the Jesuses of different denominations. We have the Baptist Jesus. We have the Methodist Jesus. We have the Catholic Jesus, and we have we have a Mormon Jesus, and, and we have the Jesus that, that listens to his to his mom, and we have the Jesus, some Jesus, who's, who seems to be the half brother of Lucifer, and, and we have this Jesus who believes in baptism by immersion, and, and all these wonderful things. But well, I'm here to remind you, White Pahu Church, that there's there's no such thing as a denominational Jesus. The Bible tells us there's only Jesus. There's no mystic Jesus, there's, there, there's no Muslim Jesus, there's no, there's just Jesus. For there's no other name whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. And so I'm entitled today's sermon, The Jesus That Nobody Wants. And then when we look at, at the popularity of Jesus, and this is, this is the warning, this is the warning I want to bring to White Bahu Church. This is the concern. When we look at, at the popularity of of, of the Jesus in all these different denominations, all these different thinkings, I have, I have come to conclude that, that the popularity of Jesus has diluted him. Amen. The Jesus that we see today, the popular Jesus, 
is a diluted Jesus. And the kind of Jesus that people love to follow is, is, is the Jesus that always talks about love. I'm talking about the Jesus that nobody wants. Amen. The popular kind of Jesus is, is the Jesus that, that we love to cuddle and, 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 and we love to pinch in his cheeks. And, and, and we love to hear sermons about, about Jesus. You see, the Jesus that we love is the Jesus that says, turn the other cheek. We love that Jesus. And if I were to preach a sermon about turning the other cheek, we'll get, we'll get all the hearty amens. Amen, brother preacher. That, that's the Jesus I want. And then we give the we give the amen when 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 we say, oh yeah, the Jesus, the Jesus that says that says, take the shirt off your back and give it to your enemy. We love that Jesus. But when it comes to the Jesus that, that makes dire predictions about the end of the world, we don't want that Jesus. Jesus that says, turn the other cheek, yeah, we love that Jesus. Jesus that says, give your shirt off your back, yeah, we love it. Jesus that says that this world is not our home. I'm not sure about that, Jesus. So in title today's sermon, dear friends, the Jesus that nobody wants. And we have sermons in Christendom, and we have sermons in Adventism, and, and, and even in our Adventist church, we love the Jesus, we love the Jesus that says, do not judge. We love that Jesus. No, you don't judge me. Yeah, we love that Jesus. And, and my favorite one of all, and my favorite one of all is, is the golden rule Jesus. Do unto others that which you would expect to do unto yourself. We love that. We love the Jesus that says, turn the other cheek. We love the Jesus that says, love your neighbor. Yeah, we love, we love the Jesus that says, take the shirt off your back. And we love the Jesus that says, don't judge me. We, we love that Jesus. And, and the, concern, the concern that I'm presenting to you today is the concern that even in our minds we have, listen now, we have boxed Jesus. We have boxed Jesus to a kind of Jesus that we want. And, and, and we say, Jesus, Jesus, you stay in your lane and this is my lane. We, we have boxed Jesus in, in the sense that we have boxed Jesus to, to a kind of God that, that only meets us at church on Sabbath. We don't want the Jesus that comes home with us to our bedroom. Because we don't want Jesus to hear the kind of stuff that goes on behind the wall. We, we only want the Jesus that, that shows up to church every Sabbath, but, but we don't want the Jesus that comes to me, that comes with me to my workplace because I don't want to hear, I don't want that Jesus to hear how I interact with my co-workers. We love the Jesus that meets us here at 9.30 and we have good potluck, but I don't want the Jesus that, that comes into my home and, 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 and stands in between my, 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 my wife and I because I don't want that Jesus to see how I really treat my husband and how I really treat... I, I don't want that Jesus. That, that Jesus is a little bit too invasive. And so, and so we, have, we have boxed Jesus, this, this Jesus, into this, this nice loving guy that just does all these wonderful, turn the other cheek, take the shirt off your back. Jesus, you just stay in your lane. This is my lane. I'll, I'll meet you at church this next Sabbath, but don't come home with me. No, 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 no. Don't come to work with me. No, don't come. I don't want you seeing the stuff that goes on behind the curtains. That, 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 that Jesus is a little bit too invasive. I'm talking today, White Pahu Church, about the Jesus that nobody wants. So even after 2,000 years, Jesus is still popular. We love that Jesus. But how about the Jesus of the Bible? If you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to the book of Matthew. I hope you brought your Bibles with you. Matthew, what book are we on? Matthew chapter 1. Matthew, all the way in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 1. What chapter are we on? One. Matthew chapter 1. We all know this verse. Matthew chapter 1 and, and, verse, and verse 21. We 
quote this in Christmas season, Matthew chapter 1, and verse, what verse are we on? Verse 21. The Bible says here, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name who, friends? Jesus. 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 Why, what, what does Jesus mean? Why, why is his name called Jesus? He shall what? He shall what? He shall save us from what? From our sins. You see, we love this Jesus that says, turn the other cheek. And we love this Jesus that says, you know, take the shirt off your back. And we love this loving, good deeds Jesus. But, but, but how about the Jesus, listen, how about the Jesus that wants to save you from sin? Amen. And sometimes when Jesus saves you from sin, he has to be a little bit invasive. And we don't like that. The kind of Jesus that steps into our comfort zone. But in order for Jesus to save you from sin, in order for Jesus to save you from, he has to, he, he has to come into the depths of sin and save you from that particular sin. Amen. You, know, you know what, dear friends? This, you know, sin is an ugly thing. And I've said this to my church. I said, you know, the, 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 the thing about sin, dear friends, is that, is that the more you commit the more you commit a particular sin, the less it bothers you. Those are weak amen. So let me say one more. This, this is the danger of sin. The more you commit a particular sin, the less it bothers you. How much more, right? And that's the kind of sin. That's the kind of sin that Jesus wants to save us from. So I want to present to you, dear friends, this, this other side of Jesus, the Jesus that nobody wants, the Jesus that wants to save us from sin. Amen. Come with me to John 3.16. Well, we, we already know John 3.16. We love, we love that Jesus that says, For God so loved the world that he what? That he gave his only begotten Son, that what? Amen. That whoso what? Amen. Whosoever believeth in him shall what? Not shall not perish, but have what, friends? But shall have shall have everlasting life. And and we go around in, in Christian and say, yeah, we love that Jesus. John 3 16, Jesus. But but before John 3 16, there's there's John chapter 3, verse 3. The same Jesus now. Come over to John chapter 3. John chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says here. John chapter 3. And what verse are we on? John chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, and say unto thee, Except a what? Be born again. Be what? Be born again, he shall what? He cannot see the kingdom of God. So we love to say, Yeah, Jesus of God, yeah, God, God's another. But how about that Jesus says, You must be born again. You cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you're born again. The Jesus that nobody wants. What concerns me, dear friends, in Christendom and even in Adventism is that even amongst our young people, we have this, we have this, we have this generation of people who say, well, well, I, I just want to follow Jesus, but, but, but I don't want to be connected to a church. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that on Facebook? Yeah. I want to follow this Jesus, but I don't want to go to church. I'll just keep to myself. And, 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 and there's, this, there's this popular strong movement of, of a Jesus where, where you can... You can, you can be a Christian and you don't have to be connected to a body of Christ. You don't have to be part of God's remnant church. But when I think about this white Bible church, I often wonder to myself, well, how about the Jesus that it was his custom to go to church every Saturday? Amen. How about that Jesus? Amen. The Jesus that was connected to a church, that was connected to a synagogue. <coughs> How about that church? And, and he didn't just go to church every Sabbath and, and do nothing. The Bible continues to say that he would go to every church, he would go to church every Sabbath and he would stand up to read. So, so that Jesus wasn't a pew warming Jesus. He was an active Jesus. He would stand up for to read. He would be active in church. That's the kind of Jesus we want. Can he say amen? amen. And, and, and so we have this, we have this, 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 this box, this, this box concept of Jesus. And, and it's really nothing new, if you notice, because even Jesus' associates will try to box him. Remember Mary, his mother? 
the wedding of Cana. He says, hey, hey, you know, dude, you know, this is Jesus, this is the Son of God, dude. And Jesus says, hey, don't box me, my time has not come yet. You cannot box the Son of God. And then he had his disciples in the book of John chapter 7 who tried to make him popular. Jesus would say, no, 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 no. I didn't just come and save you from political Rome. I came to save you from sin. Jesus being king of the Roman Empire, we love that Jesus. But the kind of Jesus who will come and suffer and die, no, 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 I'm not sure about that Jesus. I believe that we're living in the end times. Can you say amen? amen? And the Bible tells us that before the second coming of Jesus, there will be a false one. There will be a false Christ. Well, not so much before Jesus comes, it has come. And in our world today, there's this, there's this, there's this false Jesus that's that's conditioning the world for the false Christ. And so my proposition and my appeal to you at Bahu Church is to get to know the Bible Jesus. The real Jesus. Because there's another Christ that will come and he will talk like Jesus, he will act like Jesus, and he will smell like Jesus, he will talk like Jesus. And unless you do not know the real Jesus for yourself, you too will be swept away. The Jesus that nobody wants. We love the Jesus that's always giving. The Jesus that giveth. The Jesus that gives you this new job. The Jesus that gives you money just when you need it. The Jesus that gives you a house. The, the Jesus that gives you children. The, the Jesus that, 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 that gives you a nice church. But, but how about the Jesus that takes your job away? You want, that, you want that Jesus too? Or how, how about the Jesus, how about the Jesus that, that allows you to be broke just to teach you a lesson? We don't want that Jesus. And so we love the Jesus that's always giving. We love the Jesus that's always giving. But how about the Jesus that take it? Joke. And sometimes he will take from you just to remind you, just to remind you that he is God. Amen. Matthew, come with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 10. What book are we on? Matthew, chapter 10. Beginning with verses 32 in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. We're talking about Jesus. Who am I talking about? Jesus. We're talking about Jesus. We want the real Jesus. What I'm saying. Matthew chapter 10, verses 32, and down to verse 33 and verse 34. The Bible says, This is Jesus. Listen, listen to what this Jesus, the Jesus that nobody wants. Whosoever Therefore shall what? Confess me before men. Him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also what? Deny me. Deny before who? My Father, which what? Which is in heaven. You know, this, this Jesus ain't no joke. Because this, this is what Jesus is saying. If, if you're not at a level, and if you're not at a level in your spiritual life where you cannot confess Jesus and open, Jesus ain't gonna confess you when he comes. Yeah, that's right. That's the Jesus nobody wants. If you're at a spiritual level where you're too shy, you're too fearful of proclaiming the name of Jesus, Jesus ain't gonna remember you when he comes back. These are Jesus' words. This is the Jesus that nobody wants. We love the, 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 the graceful Jesus. We love the, the merciful Jesus. But, but how about the Jesus says, if you, don't, if, you don't, if you don't remember me, I ain't remembering you. How about that Jesus? And then he goes on. Think, then, then he goes on to verse 30. We're talking about the same Jesus now. Verse 34, the Bible says, this is Jesus. Verse 34, he says, 
think not that I am come to say what? Peace on earth, but I came not to say peace, but a what? But Jesus know what he wants. The Jesus know what he wants. The Jesus that says, I came not to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword. How about that, Jesus? You know, you know what sword represents in the Bible, right? We all know the verse, Hebrews chapter 4. The Bible tells us that the sword of the what phrase? The sword of truth. The word of God. And, and what does the word of God do? In what? How many feel good when it cuts? The purpose of a soul is to what? Is to what? Is to cut. I've said this to my church over in Kauai and I'll say it to my Tahu church. Church, a good sermon is a sermon that cuts. Yes, right. A good sermon is a sermon. You know that good kind of sermon you, 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 you know, you know you're wrong. And after the sermon you're contemplating, you're like, oh. the kind of sermon that sends you home thinking. Hmm? Amen. Not this feel good kind of sermon, a sermon that cuts. Those are the good sermons. And I'll say this to my church, and I'll say it to any church, that, 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 that as a preacher, as a, as a pastor of the gospel, my, my intent in preaching is, is not to so much get you to enjoy the sermon, but to get you to get the sermon. <clears throat> because we have too many preachers who, you enjoy the sermon, they're, they're crying, they're laughing, they're, 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 they're so dynamic, and then when you, when you walk out of church and you ask you, what did you learn? Well, I don't know, but it was a good sermon. So the good kind of sermons, the good kind of, the Jesus kind of sermons, are the sermons that cut. Amen. The kind of sermon that makes you think. And ask yourself, what sin do I need to confess? Those are the good kind of sermons. Those are the kind of sermons we need every Sabbath. What do you say? Amen. Here's my whole thought under the sermons for today's, today's sermon. Loving, the loving Jesus is wonderful. But feeling bad about the sin the way Christ does is more important. Yes. Loving the loving Jesus is good. But feeling bad about sin the way Jesus does is far more important. We love to hear sermons about the love of Jesus. That's good. But how about preaching sermons about the sins that Jesus hated? Amen. The Jesus that nobody wants. So even after 2,000 years, Jesus is still popular, but diluted. And we want the real Jesus. And, 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 and it behooves me, and it baffles me, White Bahu Church, as I come to a close, is that Jesus is pictured as this, as this weakling. And I'm often talking to people and giving Bible studies to people, and they say, well, you know, Moses, he was, he was strong, but Jesus, he was, he was all about grace. Moses was, you know, he was tough, but Jesus, he, you know, he was a little, he was a little bit of a wood. Jesus, he, you know, he had no backbone. But when you examine scripture, who was more tough, Moses or Jesus? Jesus. When, when Moses said, thou shalt not kill, and then Jesus comes along and says, if you hate your brother in your mind, you've just killed, who's more tough? Oh, mm. Moses says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus comes along and he says, if you think lustful thoughts towards that person, you're sinning. Yes. So who's more tough? Jesus. So this idea that Moses is tough and Jesus, no, 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 no. Jesus was no weak. Jesus was the Son of God. Amen. Amen. The Jesus that we need is the Jesus that wants to invade your thoughts and to change your mind. Yes. 
You see, dear friends, the, the most private thing about us as human beings, the most private thing about us are our thoughts. Would you agree? Yes. That's the most private thing about are our thoughts. You know, I've often wondered, what, what would church be like if we all came to church and we could read each other's thoughts? You wonder that? So the most private thing about us are our thoughts. But what would it be like? What would church be like if we all came to church and, and this aisle could read the thoughts of this aisle and that aisle could read the thoughts of that aisle? I'll tell you what, there'll be no more church. <laughs> But the most private thing about us are our thoughts. And that's what Jesus wants. Jesus wants our thoughts, our heart, our mind. Because once he has our thoughts, he has our habits. When he has our habits, he has our character. And when he has our character, he has our destiny. What do you say? Yeah. Jesus is coming soon. Don't be deceived by this popular Jesus. There's only one Jesus, the Jesus of Scripture, Amen. the real Jesus. Amen. Let me read to you this quote as I come to a close. Prophets and Kings, page 177. Multitudes have a wrong conception of God. And Jesus is God. Multitudes have a wrong conception of God and His attributes and are as truly serving a false God as when the worship is obeyed. I'll repeat that one more time. But the stating of the word are substitute with Jesus because Jesus is God. Multitudes have a wrong conception of Jesus and His attributes. And they are as truly serving a false God as were the worshippers of Baal. When you have this wrong concept of God, you are guilty of serving Baal. Right. You are guilty of idol worship as were the idol worshippers of the Old Testament. That's why it's crucial in these end times that we get to know the real Jesus. Right. The Jesus of Scripture. The Jesus of the Bible is the one that wants to change you. The Jesus of Scripture is the Jesus that wants to give you victory over sin. That's the real Jesus. The real Jesus in Scripture is the Jesus that doesn't stand aloof from our, from our concerns. But, but the real Jesus in Scripture is the Jesus that was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Who understands what you go through. Who was just like you. That's the real Jesus. Don't be deceived by any other Jesus. I want Jesus. Amen. And I want the real Jesus. Amen. That is my prayer and my hope for the White Bible Church today. Jesus is coming soon, and I want to be ready for the real Jesus. Amen. 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 Take our mission.